Welcome to the Home Builder Digital Marketing Podcast. Over 90% of today's home buyers start their buyer journey online. Here we talk with not only industry experts, but also your fellow home builder marketers to learn how you can succeed in our incredibly competitive digital world. And now, here are your hosts, Greg Bray and Kevin Weitzel. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Home Builder Digital Marketing Podcast. I'm Greg Bray with Blue Tangerine. And I'm Kevin Weitzel with Outhouse. We're thrilled today to be joined by our special guest, Lauren St. Martin, the Marketing Manager at Creative Homes. Welcome, Lauren. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to join us. And as just let's dive right in. And, and Lauren, why don't you just introduce yourself to folks who are listening today and tell us a little bit about you. Perfect. Well, my name is Lauren, marketing manager for, for Creative Homes out of Minnesota. And I live in Wisconsin, the lovely state of Wisconsin with my husband, my son, and our wiener dog, Lucy. That's kind of me in a nutshell. <laughs> Well, that's the business you. And normally I ask, you know, like an oddball question, like, tell us something secret about you. But I happen to know that you were a bartender. Mm -hmm. So yes. what's the signature drink? You know, you're, talking, you're talking to a drinker here. Loaded question. Oh, I know. Just, just the one that you're going to surprise a fat guy like me walking into the bar that just, hey, man, I, I've got to drink something awesome. Wow me today. What is it going to be? A Long Island iced tea. Long Island iced tea. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm a wine and scotch guy, just so you know, for future reference for gifts around the holidays, but you know. Perfect. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> and, and just because of the w Wisconsin, we got to ask about cheese. Is there any, some, some favorite cheese or something there? Uh, um, I don't necessarily have a favorite cheese, but I do enjoy a good squeaky cheese curd. If it's squeaky, it is the best cheese curd. It doesn't squeak. It's not a cheese curd. Exactly. <laughs> if your teeth don't squeak, it is not a cheese curd. Exactly. Know that. And, and I apologize if that was a stereotypical insulting question to ask someone from Wisconsin. But, you know, you hey, know, that's, that's all I, I know about Wisconsin, right? So, I won't yeah. take offense to it because I didn't grow up here. I grew up in Minnesota. I just okay. live here now. <laughs> On the other side of the border. Okay. Yes. Got it. Got it. All right. Awesome. Well, Lauren, tell us a little bit about your professional background and, and how you got into the home building industry. Yeah, I have been with Creative Homes for about six years, just under six years. I had my recruiter many, many moons ago give me a call and let me know that she had an interesting opportunity for me. I come from a heavy background in design. I was in package design and large format graphics before the world of home building. She mentioned this company and I had said, you know what? I don't know if I'm interested in the marketing role. I'm not interested. I just don't know. And she said, you know what? I think that it's going to be well worth having a conversation with the owner of this company. I think you two would really hit it off. So I said, oh, why not? And I did. And meeting Nick Hackworthy, the owner of Creative Homes was definitely what brought me into this industry. He is very passionate about the home building industry and he kind of he grew up in it and he you know lives and breathes creative homes and everything and he just made me want to be a part of this world so a part of the home building world <laughs> and it was just I knew that that was my next step and I took the job and I now here we are <laughs> So with, with that being said, and in full disclosure, we have at Outhouse done some work for Creative Homes, interactive floor plans, interactive site plans. But what I was really impressed with is that Nick Hackworthy was so heavily involved in that initial phase of just learning about the product and wanting to make sure that, you know, if he was going to allocate the dollars to it, that he, he had full buy-in. And we don't actually get that from a lot of owners. A lot of owners just trust their teams or, you know, or just kind of say it's, they're going to handle it. But it was really kind of really a breath of fresh air to see an owner that heavily involved that really wanted to see a success of that implementation. But I do have one weird thing about him. I think that he, and I don't know why, but I picture him because he has that, that high level of, of involvement walking around with that office space cup and then walking into somebody's cubicle and being, yeah, does he do any of that? 
<laughs> a little bit, yes. A little bit? All right. <laughs> well, the cool thing is that he did make the decision to move forward with that, and then he implemented his rock team. But then I guess I really want to know, when you do implement that tech, what what headaches came about of it? You know, what, 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 what were the deciding factors on wanting to move into that tech side of the world of implementing interactive floor plans, interactive site plans? You know, it was always something that we had been interested in. It was kind of had come down to finding the right fit, finding one that offered all of the options that we were looking for from a fit and finish. We interviewed a few different companies and well, tech companies to do this for us. And we just had a great experience with you, Kevin, and your team. I know. <laughs> and honestly, it what it came down to was the functionality of what your product could offer us. And honestly, it has been, it was a pleasure. It was almost seamless working with your team and delivering our assets and having you guys just completely run with it. And then what you delivered us was, you know, with the minor round of modifications, it was nearly perfect to go right out of the bat, which was, perfect. you know, ideally what, what we were looking for. And at that point we were like, well, shoot, why didn't we move forward with this sooner? Because we saw such a great response from our customers and our sales team using this, that we were like, wow, this was something we should have implemented years well, ago. I know, I know that Caroline said that she said that working with you was like working with a rock star. And she's one of our rock stars, by the way. But yeah, Caroline Ryan said that they, it couldn't have gone any better. You know, obviously every, every account can have some revisions and stuff. But let me ask you this, and this is kind of a different angle. Outside of the tech, when do you as a marketing manager determine whether you want to do something in-house or outsource it to a, you know, a, a provider, a, a strategic partner, if you will? I think it comes down mostly to time and resources. You know, do I have the time to do it? Does it make most sense for me to spend that time, my valuable time working on that versus working on something else that could yield more results? I mean, I could have tried to learn interactive site maps myself and implemented that entirely on my website alone. But that would have taken me, who knows how much time and that would have taken me away from the day-to-day -day marketing things that need to run the business. So Lauren, when, when you implemented, you know, some of those tools, you, you made the comment just a second ago that, that your customers had a really positive reaction to that. What, what did that look like? How, what, I mean, I, I don't know, were they just calling you and it's like, finally, you put these on your website or, or what, what kind of reaction were you seeing that, that makes you feel like there was that, that engagement with the customers? Yeah. So no, it wasn't a phone, phone calls were coming in off the hook or anything like that. We, we did some marketing around new, the new offering of interactive floor plans on our site with our online sales specialist. And he kind of walked through a video of exactly how to do it, pick your options, change things around. And it was just very friendly, very inviting. And we advertised that quite a bit via social, social media and on our website alone. And the positive experience we had was I had our sales team reach out to me specifically and said, it has been so much fun to watch our customers come in with a floor plan, print it out, exactly knowing what they want, how they want it built, knowing that their extended truck will fit in the garage. Just little things that you don't necessarily think about. You know, you don't know if your truck's going to fit in the garage because the standard garage may not work with your extended fit Ford F-150. But that is an option with the interactive floor plans to see that that fits. So it's a nice add to see, you know, what do you, where do you need to bump things out? Where do you need to add a couple extra square footage? Like what, what is your family going to need in order for them to build the best possible home to fit their needs? And that is exactly what that tool gave us and people were so people enjoyed it so much it was 
really fun to watch people be like, I have my home. It's right here. <laughs> when can I start building it? <laughs> Well, you said some magic words. You said that your sales team bought into the tech being implemented, you know, to the, that tool being implemented on the website. So when you get that, and I think that's a very important aspect, you know, you can, you can have the owners or the marketing team spend all the money they want and implement, you know, X, Y, and Z. But what it really comes down to it is that if you don't get the buy-in from your sales team, you don't get the buy-in from your clients, or if your web designer makes it, you know, a game of where was Waldo to find the content, you just threw money in the toilet, really, is what it comes down to. Yes. So we spent a ton of time involving our team on, inter on the interactive floor plans. We said, hey, you know, these are going live, play around in them. Let me know how you feel. Like, tell us what you're thinking. And they bought in right away. So, which was surprising and a happy surprise, we'll say. <laughs> So it was, I was very happy to see that my team was adapting to using this tool because it really only benefits them. So Lauren, let's talk a little bit more about your team and how you're, how you're set up. So as, as a marketing manager at, at Creative Homes, how, how is that put together? You know, you, you came in from a graphic design background, you know, so you were probably thinking, oh, I'm going to get to do some art somewhere along the line, right? But then you discovered that marketing is a little more than just that piece, right? So how, how did you kind of create that team and build that team? Yeah, so my team has changed year over year. We've had different sales leaders, different marketing professionals come in and out. And basically kind of where we're at now is we have myself, we have a marketing coordinator and we have a online sales counselor who is heavily involved in the marketing team and the sales team. And that has kind of been the best fit because we have, you know, we have a doer, we have the voice and the face, and then we have somebody who's doing the more strategic messaging of, you know, where we need to implement, implement and what we need to implement. So that has kind of worked best for us, a small team, but we're small and mighty and we do have some great outsource partners working with do you convert and the people over at outhouse and we just recently redid our website with the people over at o'neill and all really great experiences oh that's that's terrific so that is a pretty lean team and obviously you know having the strategic partners definitely helps but with that lean team like just how many homes are you guys selling a year if you can disclose that Yep. So we're on track to do about 250 this okay. year, just under 200 last year. And we have been growing upwards and upwards and we do have a lean and mean team, but it hasn't stopped us from growth year over year. And, and, with that kind, and with that kind of volume, you're, you're pretty much one of the major players up in your market then, correct? One of, yes. Yeah. One so, of. <laughs> Lauren, did, did you, did I understand you correctly that your online sales counselor is considered part of the marketing team versus part of the sales team or, or describe that a little bit more? He sits on both. He, which is a win for me in marketing. He is a great asset to our team. He offers, he originally was on the sales team out in the field and he expressed interest in the online sales role when it opened up. And we were so excited to bring him in house. And I was thrilled to have him be a part of my side of the team, working closely with me because he is so knowledgeable on the sales side, a piece that I knew, but not nearly as well as he did. So he brings a different set of skills to the marketing team that we don't necessarily have. He brings that extra voice from the sales team. So... No, I, I think that's I think that's an opportunity that I don't see a lot of builders tapping into is that insight that the OSC can have about what's working, what's not, where are people, you know, not finding their answers, you know, what are the common questions, you know, how what tools do I need to really help, you know, move these people through the process? I, I think that's a, a terrific insight. And, and way to structure that team where they're kind of that bridge almost between marketing and sales and, and sounds like from what you've described. So kudos, kudos on, on doing something that I think is a little unique out there. Maybe I'm wrong, 
but Greg, I think you're dead on. I, I think it's forward thinking to have that OSC be that liaison between the two or a somewhat of a liaison to where when you're rolling out new programs, new, new technology, new tools that are going to feed the beast of the sales team, that, that any of the feedback needs to come back through that person back to, back to that marketing manager. Love it. Lauren, tell us a little bit more about your evolution over the last, you know, you mentioned, you know, five or six years from where you were five years ago with kind of the digital piece of your marketing plan and how that's changed and evolved over the last few years. If, if not, maybe you've been doing it all, all along. I don't know, but <laughs> how's, how's that evolved? No, definitely not. When I was first brought on, we were, I mean, as you know, and most other people in this industry know that the home building industry alone is very traditional, especially from a marketing sense. And where we are, I felt like five years ago, five and a half years ago, when I first started with creative, I was, I would say heavily 70% print versus 30% digital. And it has slowly evolved to, I mean, today we're at a minimum completely flipped 70% digital, 30% print. We still have print. We're not going to get away from print in this world. Just this industry isn't going to allow that. People like paper when they're building a house (laughs) and that's completely fine, which is good for me because I do both, but it has been a fun ride to watch it transition from one to the other. It's given me an opportunity to learn more and challenge myself to experience new things and reach out to new and different people and watch our company grow from, you know, evolving from the website we had day one to the website we have now. And I would have never, if you would have asked me five years ago, if we would have had an interactive piece on our website, I probably would have said, no, we don't need that. (laughs) (laughs) And, and what would and you that, say to someone today who does not have an interactive thing on their website? I would say you're losing out. I mean, I think that, you know, we saw it with the nationals first and now we're slowly starting to see more local builders use this, but I'd have to say in our market, there is a very small handful of people who are utilizing interactive pieces on their site. You know, we have a very few amount of builders that we compete with here locally that have even OSCs, which is a huge advantage. I mean, it's a resource taken off my plate where I don't have to field and yield leads to my sales team to hope that they're, you know, taking advantage of these leads that are coming in digitally. I have somebody who is taking those leads and they're training them and getting them right to where they need to be in order to buy a house. So when you look then at these tools, you are seeing a clear competitive advantage compared to your other local builders that, that aren't using those similar types of, of tools on their website. Did I understand that correctly? Yes. That's true. Definitely. <laughs> That's true. I'd like to see the year analytics and the year anniversary of implementation of the, if you track it, the close, the time it takes to close an actual client as compared to what is what it was before that. Because, you know, when somebody utilizes, just say, an in interactive floor plan, they've already propelled themselves further into the funnel than somebody that just looks at a floor plan slick or, the, you know, eyeballs a static on their website. So I'd be curious to know what the numbers are as to, you know, the time it takes to, you know, from first touch to closing the contract, what that, what that close ratio and timeframe looks like. Yeah. The the close ratio is definitely higher on people who are using that tool. The timeframe is very dependent on that buyer. I mean, we offer, we service a wide variety of buyers from move up to right sizing downsizing all over the board and we have some buyers who come in and we call them floor plop floor floor pops and they purchase on that same exact day that they walk in and we have some people who you know we're nurturing these leads for you know six months and they could do six different floor plans interactive floor plans on our site and we have to teach them 
and let them experience, you know, why, why this plan over this plan is main level living more important to you? You know, do you need that master on the main is upstairs fine? You know, we have to, our team is highly educated on our floor plans in order to give the best option to our customers. Greg, I got to admit something. I just asked a completely loaded question. I knew the answer to that question, not from them, but from all the stats of all the IFPs we have out there. I know that IFPs, regardless of who supplies them, shortens up the uh, timeline it takes to close a client. And I know that you'll see more in influx of leads that come from them. So I apologize to the listening audience that I asked a loaded question. Well, but you did say something pretty important. You said something about floor pops and a very short cycle of people just dropping in. What is the climate like up there in your market? Are you guys seeing that same heavy, you know, increase of traffic due to COVID that other build, you know, that other areas of the country are seeing? Number one and number two, where are you at in your inventory levels? Are you, are you ahead or behind the game on keeping up with inventory and the appropriate amount of inventory per your market? Okay, you asked about six questions there. I know. Um, <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> Trying to circle back. Floor plops. Floor. Why can't I say that? floor pops. We are seeing a higher increase in traffic, especially digitally. What I will say is we aren't necessarily seeing a higher increase number volume in traffic coming into our doors. The people who are coming into our doors are buyers. They're not looky-loos. They're not, I'm looking for design ideas. They're, I would like to build a new house and I would like to build a new house now. So can we circle back to one of the other questions you asked there? The other, the other <laughs> question was that, are you, what is your inventory levels inventory. looking like? Are you, are you selling so much that you're actually running out of inventory or are you staying comfortable and well poised to be able to close deals as they come in? You know, I would say probably two, two, three months ago, we were definitely having an influx in inventory, but now we're, we saw that happening. So we're putting more things in the ground. So we are putting more homes in the ground. We are setting ourselves up to not see that again, but you know, we're seeing home buyers all over the board if they want inventory or if they want to build. So do we have enough inventory for those people? Not everybody, but we are set up pretty well in order to accomplish those buyers who. Lauren, you mentioned that when you first rolled out some of the interactive tools like the floor plans that, that you had this overwhelming kind of positive response from buyers. And that was a little while ago. Do you feel like buyers are still reacting to these tools like, oh, this is new and cool? Or do you feel like it's expected now and, and that they, their expectations have evolved and changed regarding these types of, of tools? No, I wouldn't necessarily say that their expectations have changed from a digital side only because there aren't that many people in our marketplace who are using these. So it is a little unique for us to have these interactive floor plans and site maps on our site so people can actually do the things that they need to. So I wouldn't necessarily say they, they're coming to our website expecting it, but I, I would think that they, they are coming to our website expecting to talk to someone and to talk to someone now. So that's where our OSC comes in heavily and he can help guide them to where they need to go on our site or where they need to go in a sales model. You know, we get people who chat on our site immediately and they just want they, you know, they don't want to spend that time looking at our site to figure out an address of where they need to be. They say, hey, I would like to be in this school district. I have, you know, my budget is X and where do I need to go? Who do I need to talk to? And our OSC is like, let's do this. So they're, they're coming knowing exactly what they want and where they want it and just, but they don't even want to mess around searching through the, the homes. Just tell me which one, sign me up. Here's my, here's my check. Well, that's yeah. awesome. That's terrific. So Lauren, what are, what are some of the, the things that, that you're watching from a technology standpoint and, and looking at even just around, you know, our industry, other industries, 
different things that, that intrigue you? Yeah, I think as far as exploring, you know, what new tech options are out there, I'm always trying to stay on top of, you know, what other people are doing, what is innovative, everything along those lines. But I think this year is a prime example of, you know, being open-minded to adapt to change very quickly. You know, we didn't expect a pandemic this year. Or I definitely didn't. No one likes to fly on the seat of their pants, but this year has been really challenging in a lot of ways and a lot of good ways. With that being said, we can always plan and prepare for the future, but I think the biggest thing is keeping an open mind and being able to take on new challenges and having a young team. We have a very young team at Creative Homes and having that team who's willing to work through those challenges is really important for the future. And you're really only as strong as the team you surround yourself with and having that strong team is really important. So let me ask you this, especially since you come from a heavy graphics background, where do you look for areas of inspiration, whether it be in the housing industry or outside of it? Yeah, so I try to keep on trend with, you know, different marketing groups on Facebook, or on Facebook, not necessarily Instagram, but Facebook and LinkedIn. And I, I follow a ton of podcasts. I keep a close eye on a lot of the digital agencies around town, seeing what they're doing, who they're working for, what new things are they implementing. I have a lot of friends in that space still. So I'm a relationship gal. I'm not afraid to pick up the phone and say, hey, how's it going? What's working for you? You know, talk to me about what you're seeing. That's kind of how I get the best insight is from just sharing stories and listening to what other people have to say that I trust in this space. So Lauren, I was, I was going to ask you, you know, based on that, what is your favorite podcast? But since Kevin has now said that we're not allowed to ask loaded questions, we'll move on. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, but were you alluding to possibly the digital marketing podcast? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, we, we, I'm not going to ask the question. It's going to be loaded. So, I'm not gonna. so <laughs> Lauren, we, we're so grateful for, for the, the time you spent with us today. Do you have any last words of advice or, or thoughts you'd like to share with the people listening? Yes. You know, I'd really like to challenge everyone to make new friends inside and outside of your industry. Inside this industry, they can kind of be your best kept secret. You can share what's working and what's not in your market. And you never know what people are going to react to. It might work in your market, might not work in their market. It's been very beneficial to me to rely on those relationships. The people that I've met through connecting via Do You Convert or even with Kevin at Outhouse, different build partners we've seen across the country, just, you know, utilizing those people. They're in this space every day, just along with you. And you need, you need friends to get you through the day. And sometimes it's just nice to rely on, you know, those industry leaders so you can share your stories and figure out what's working and hopefully gain some nuggets on, you know, what to implement next. You just put a new twist on the village raises the child because as home builders, the home builder is building the village that builds the network that builds the home builder. Whoa, I just blew my own mind. <laughs> and, and I know that everybody can't see the visuals, but you should have seen how big Kevin's eyes just got when he was going through that. And it was, <laughs> that, was, that was impressive. We might have to release a clip on that. So Lauren, if somebody wants to reach out and connect with you, what's the, what's the best way for them to get in touch? I'd say you can definitely reach out to me on LinkedIn. No, LinkedIn's great. LinkedIn's great. LinkedIn. Yeah, that's perfect. Perfect. Well, Lauren, thank you again so much for your time today. We've learned a lot and we appreciate you sharing some of your experiences with us. Yes, of course. It's been my pleasure. And thank you everybody for listening. And we invite you to join us again next time on the Home Builder Digital Marketing Podcast. I'm Greg Bray with Blue Tangerine. And I'm Kevin Weitzel with Outhouse. Thank you. Thank you for listening. To learn more about how Blue Tangerine and Outhouse can help you generate more qualified home buyer leads, visit bluetangerine.com and outhouse.net. If you've enjoyed our show today, please tell a friend, leave us a review, and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Be sure to join us again on the Home Builder Digital Marketing Podcast.